to promote Pan-Africanism, one of the very good methods in Africa to create peace. We organize a peace caravan and we cross around 11 African countries. festival a thousand stars we have to sell our culture to the world unless we create a conscious people and generation it will be destroyed so we have to promote peace when there is peace i start my first organization called peace journey africa why you thought it was important to start your festival in the month of Agme? if you don't see your past you cannot correct your future Agme is an african golden mass and we invite everybody in Ntoto park <music> Good afternoon, this is your Pan-African show called Africa with your host Kazalor Seifu. As you know, we always have some great guests and today we have another one for you. Welcome to our studio. Thank you, Kazala. So if you could please introduce yourself, give us a little bit of your background, where you grew up, what school you went to, and then we can get to our conversation. My name is Haile Abmarasa. I born in Dilla town. 365 kilometers away from here. I go to school uh, in Mission, Agaki Mission Advanced School. And then I finish also my degree at Arakilo University. That's how uh, my education background goes. After I finish my college, and even when I was in a college, I was an activist of peace. So I start my first organization called Peace Journey Africa to promote peace and Pan-Africanism. Beautiful. That's how I started. So what did you graduate in? Um, so in fact, this was computer science. Computer science. Yes. So are you an only child? Do you have brothers and no, sisters? No, we have brothers and sisters. You do? Yes. We are six uh, brothers and sisters, and I'm the first. Oh, you're the, the first one. Yeah. Okay. So now we get into, since you also stopped at the peace journey. Yes. Uh, that was my first question. Yes. What inspired you to create Peace Journey for Development. In the beginning, as you know, by in 2010, 2009, back then I was a college student and see Ethiopia, you know, Ethiopians are very diversified. I can start from my families. My father came from Tigray, Aksum. My mother family came, her father from Wellega, her mother from Amhara, and we born in Dilla. Mm -hmm. So you see, with this old diversity, I'm thinking that we need to promote peace and Pan-Africanism in Ethiopia. At that time, when we were in a college, people are not starting, you know, this kind of violence. But there was a group you see standing, you know, separately. Mm -hmm. So we say that, you know, we need to promote peace in this country now and the awareness of peace because Ethiopians passed through a lot, you know, in the past of our history. Mm -hmm. So by showing screening as a film, we start as an initiative. We say that we need to promote peace and Pan-Africanism. As you know, the womb of Africa is here. AU is here. But we Ethiopians, we didn't even know the capital city of the rest of African countries, the economy, how they're working, you know. So we should know this. That's what's my, my first thing. So I say I need to promote peace and Pan-Africanism together in that uh, uh, initiative. You had said you started your peace journey at t in 2010. Yes. We are now 2024. Yes. So, you know, the reason why I'm asking you this is because me and you had this discussion about your peace journey mm. and you had told me what you actually did to actually to make that dream real. So you actually went through Africa. So I want all that detail because that was something that really resonated with me. Yes. When we started it, we started as an Ethiopian peace and you know, promotion company so that we just uh, see we have to organize a caravan in Africa. So it was bold back then. And then I was also a college student. And, uh, and then it took us uh, you know, almost two years here to do all the preparation. So by 2010, we get a good uh, green light from the AU because AU declares it was a peace year in Africa. So they, 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 they get our initiative, one of the best initiatives to do this caravan. So we say we're gonna do peace promotion in Africa by organizing a caravan. So we organize a peace caravan and we cross African countries. It takes us around five months, the total journey time, three, four, five months. So in every country, we had different kind of activities. AU finance, give us finance around 30,000 US dollars at that time and other partners also supporting the caravan. 
So the caravan starts from Ethiopia and go all the way to South Africa. And it was by road. Total, it was 90,000 kilometers we crossed. In every country, we had social cultural integration activities, organizing a peace walk on the street, planting a peace tree as a symbol of peace, lighting the peace flame, which was given by the AU with heads of states. So we were in a parliament. We were meeting around presidents. Uh, in five countries, we meet directly the presidents by themselves and light the peace flame with them. And other countries, we did it with parliamentarians mm -hmm. and, you know, the mayor of the town and so forth. So the caravan, you know, uh, having big impact. Uh, and we already re get recognition by heads of state report and so on. In every country, we plant as a seed peace journey. Mm -hmm. So peace journey initiative groups are established at that time in, in most of the countries, seeing our initiative. So they directly copied that initiative in their own country. So most of them now, they have a lot of activities in their own respective countries. Beautiful. How about yeah. us? When we come to Ethiopia, you know, amazingly, we even Ethiopians is the one initiating the program. We are the one come up all everything. But, you know, we are really surprised. We didn't even get a welcoming here or giving it any attention, the people, the community. Since we come, we didn't get a lot of publication for the community at least to announce. I think before even we go, I meet the current youth minister at that time and she say that, Hi love, peace is luxury. Now, you know, we have peace here. The, the Ethiopian young people need a bread. So I told her, no, this all infrastructure we build, unless we create a conscious people and generation, it will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So we have to promote peace when there is peace. Right. I told her, yes, I agree there is peace in 2010 in Ethiopia, relatively from most of the time. But at that time was the, the, you know, the very good time to aware young people to that. don't be follow the politicians and then give their life to something not worth it. Mm. You know, in many, in many times, as you know, African users are affected through war because of the politician initiate the war and they never die themselves. But the, who will be affected? The young people, the young generation, who are easily motivated by telling him your country is affected, come out, you know, do this, do this. So that's how the peace journey uh, start back then. So can we say that it's taking a pause right now? What does it no, take for no. that peace journey? Because it seems yeah, like yeah. we no, need no, it the, more the now. The peace journey is very active currently, uh, working with different organizations. Uh, creating awareness. Now we are, we want to focus on trauma healing now. You know, mm. our country is also affected by different kind of war. So the trauma healing process is very important for the people to release. And we also have a second phase caravan coming, which is in 2020, uh, we already agree with the AU to start it, but the corona came, so we couldn't organize the second phase caravan. We are also planning after the Northern Ethiopian conflict finished, we are also planning to organize a caravan through that area. But after that, again, another conflict starts so that the, the journey is not happened for now. In our caravan, we're not only Ethiopians, we had different African countries, young people also joining us. So our, okay. our, our, our caravan is always vibrant by different culture, not only Ethiopian really? culture, okay. different African countries' culture. So basically what Peace Journey did now is we are still, we didn't go out uh, for a public in our documentary film. Mm. It takes a while. Now the documentary film is uh, almost done. So we expect to have the documentary film. We have the picture exhibition now for Pagme. And also we are, you know, working closely with the Ethiopian civil society organization. We are having a peace activity in the universities, like yeah. panel discussion, awareness creation program, th trauma healing program, and Pan-Africanism as well. To promote Pan-Africanism, one of the very good method in Africa to create peace, because Absolutely. most people having tribal issue, you know? Uh, so that will be also uh, one of the reasons peace journey, have both of the peace journey, the peace and the Pan-Africanism concept together. Beautiful. One of the reasons we actually met to today, talk today yes, was yes. because of Ogme. Yes. So now we have to tell our audience what Ogme is, why you thought it was important to start your festival in the month of Ogme. Thank you, Kazik, for asking this question. Ogme is a big dream and vision for me because I'm thinking, you know, in our country, in Ethiopia, we have several festivals, but we don't have inclusive festival in my view, because most of our festivals are religious, 
Mm. Okay, they are good. Okay, good to have religious festival, but they are not inclusive. Our other festivals are tribal festivals, like you know, there is Chambalala, Recha, and all all New Year celebration of different tribes by themselves without coming together. So that's also not inclusive. The other is a political festival. I call them like Gimbot Haya, Maskaram Hulet, and the government is active event organizer in this country usually. So this also cannot be inclusive. It will be, you know, um, one-sided festival. So what we are trying to create is an international festival. Millions of uh, international community come to visit Ethiopia, what Ethiopia look like in general. And uh, most importantly, we call Pagme, Pagme an African golden month. You know, because there is no any 13 months in this world. Exactly. We so amazingly, like... these 13 months can be a great platform yeah. for us to have a very uh, a vibrant, uh, inclusive, cultural uh, festival. So I visit several festivals internationally. So I was really jealous to see a lot of people coming to their country, you know, enjoying and, and the economy will be also good because people will come from internationally and pay their money. And for the country as well, Ethiopia needs such kind of festivals because we need to know Afaris, we need to know Gambellas, we need to know Benchangul's. We are a lot of people, a lot of, so we don't know how, what they eat, what they do. If we want to sustain our Ethiopia by believing these all eight, six tribes are our people, we should have to know each other. We should have to have great a platform for the people to know each other because always the politicians are in between of the people, you know. Mm. Uh, so the people cannot get a chance really to be close to each other because there is people standing in between. Do you remember that festival, A Thousand Stars? That's exactly yes. what you just described. Yes. <laughs> Many festivals need to have, but Pagme is a different one. Mm. Ethiopia having Pagme symbolically. This symbol is our symbol, the 13 month symbol. Mm. So, and also, you know, Kazala, nobody get paid in Pagme, amazingly. Mm. I was asking IOM people was very surprised. They said, ah, I love eight hours is the maximum people can work. And you tell me people doesn't work? Yeah, we say 30 months of sunshine, but we pay 12 months of salary. Oh. So nobody so get paid on that season. Ethiopia uh, can make this season as a free festival season, can close it. When I say uh, we have to close the season, most people say, oh, we are poor, we don't do work, so how can we close? No, we do better work on that time. Mm -hmm. Better work of promotion our culture, better work of knowing each other and bringing international community. We Ethiopians, we have a lot of things. But, you know, if you say, oh, we win Adwa, we are the owner of coffee founders, we are Lucy, so for what? We're still begging. Mm. We're still going internationally, <laughs> asking people to give us money. So we have to use this opportunity to bring international community. We have to sell our culture to the world. So Pagme Festival is an international cultural festival. It's happening for the seventh time now. We did it six times. This year is our seventh time. Since we come up with this idea and establish our company, say Pagme Festival, it become 10 years now since our idea came. I believe now this year, Africa Union is also give us recognition by Africa Tourism Board, no. which is Africa Tourism Board is one of the uh, organization promoting tourism in Africa. Uh, they say, oh, it's a great season to bring Africans together as a free trade. You know, AU is here for the past 15 years, as everybody know, but we don't know each other, you know. Yeah. You know, leaders are coming every year. And then, you know, when the leaders comes, as you know, they're always hiding. So they go to the Africa Union, they've been ratifying. But we don't know about Senegal, Mali, Togo, and other countries. So on this specific season, Pwagme invite, you know, artists. Pwagme invite business people. Pwagme invite everyone in Africa with a very cheap price. Ethiopia Airlines this year start working to sell our event ticket internationally. So I think this season uh, will create, will be a platform for Africans to come to trade together, to exchange culture, to know each other, to know Ethiopia also their country. And we have several different activities in all five days and it's an amazing time. I believe uh, it will attract uh, all African countries in the beginning for them to come, Kenyans to meet here, Nigerians, mm -hmm. Angolans and Benins for a week period of time. At the same time, while they are celebrating an African New Year, which is the Ethiopian New Year also is our last event date, so 
That's how it's coming, Bwagme. Beautiful. So you truly feel that this Bwagme festival would help Ethiopia in the tourism industry, correct? Yes, not only in the tourism industry. It will help Ethiopia to create peace. Culture mm. is a means of knowing each other. So to bring the community together, it will create cohesion mm -hmm. and peaceful environment and also will help the tourism. I don't think we've talked about when the festival is, for how long and where, the most important okay. one. <laughs> uh, we are organizing the Pogme Festival in Ntoto Park. We are organizing uh, Pogme Festival in Ntoto Park by signing agreement with Federal Park Corporation. So it will start from Pogme 1st or September 6th in, in European calendar. So it will stay from September 6th to 10 in Amharic from Pogme 1 to 5. So we did it uh, last year also we are in Ntoto. This year also we are in Ntoto in all gate. Last year only we had one gate in Ntoto. This year we'll organize in the whole in Toto. Nice. The festival. The first day is always our program is about peace. We're working uh, with different civil society organizations and Peace Journey team also is active on this one. The second day is also argument for Pan-Africanism. So we have uh, Africa Tourism Board and different embassies are working with us. The third day is Pagme 3. We have the Great Run in the Rain activity. People can come well, if they want to run in the rain and feel the last year is finished, I'm going <laughs> to the new year. Uh, and then also the third day is uh, Pogme for kids, a kids activity. We believe that we have to take out our children from digital game. Sometimes they need to have exercise. You know, children need to know, you know, their own culture. Children need to know all the games. But otherwise, if you have a kid and giving him digital game, killing each other, you know, it doesn't help. The fourth day is less trade on Pogme. This is also networked with uh, Africa free trade activity. You know, CFI in Ghana. Already free trade are allowed in Africa and so forth. So we want to use that platform in Pogme. And then it's New Year. People will buy New Year seasonal materials in our festival. So that's also one of the, the so days. So you have boots also? Mm. Uh, so the last day, we select, uh, we have a beauty contest, which is Pogme pageant uh, contest. Our pageant uh, criteria is very unique because of what we believe is naturally beautiful woman should have to come. Which no is means that no makeup, no additional hair, because we believe this is also psychological. Thank African you. people are affected to don't be themselves by putting different makeup, different artificial things to themselves. So they will lose their self-confidence as well. So we say that people should have to come washing their face and then they will be beautiful. And then also the other criteria is a woman should be, I don't know how you call it, in Amharic Balamuya, which is she have to know a lot of things in the house, or outside, or you know, doing clothes or anything, we we evaluate that. The other thing is, we should have to be conscious enough, knowing about herself, culture. She have to have confidence. But we believe our motto is everybody is beautiful in our beauty contest. So it will be a last day of Eve. We have a beautiful music uh, program at the end of the the program. So we invite everybody to be in Toto. This year we don't have any additional entrance. Only they will pay the entrance fee of the park. Okay. Uh, not additional uh, payment for Pagme. By paying that, they can come and enjoy the festival. The evening time is the most amazing, the night time. We are working with astronomy team, with Dr. Rodas and other teams. So we have, uh, you know, astronomical views. We'll see stars in the evening. We'll have telescopes. People, they can come and see how the stars are beautiful in the <laughs> evening. <laughs> So now I remember before you used to have camping. So yes. on, on this, on this, and in Toto, do you do the camping? All or? the five days we have camping. People want ah. to camp, they can come, do camp with us. If you okay. come with your tent, we can organize for you. If you don't have tent, we'll give you a tent. Yeah, that's very yes. crucial. Could you please yes. say that again? We have a camping night for five yeah. days in, in Toto Park. Anybody want to camp, you can come to Pogme and joining us. If you have your own tent, you can come, mm -hmm. camp with us. Otherwise, we can organize a camping night for you. The reason why I said that was because I read in your... Uh, yes. And one of, I think, issues that we have when it comes to camping is 
uh, cleaning after ourselves. Because that was one thing that was highlighted on your page. Yes. <laughs> was like when you go in yes. and then when you leave, you have to leave the place better, better. than what it was that's before. It. You yes, that's so that's it. very crucial. Yes, that's what we did. Because, yeah. you know, environment is the most important Absolutely, challenge. Absolutely, especially if, in a you park. Know, if we destroy our environment, you know, we're the one affected. So in that time you come, we do this in the morning, we have yoga, we have exercise, different kind of exercises. One of your exercises will be cleaning. So you clean. That's beautiful because yeah. that's one thing as a nation we need to start learning to do. It's yes. not just throwing whatever we used, mm, mm. you know. Pick up. So I've noticed that you are a man of many hats. <laughs> You do culture, you do peace, and now you've gone into? Farming. Uh, exactly. Yes. How? Because you didn't mention that in the beginning, you didn't mention that you have the love for farming either. Yes. Yes. So I would like to know how that journey began. When did you have that yeah. feeling? You know, uh, usually I, uh, what I will do is I want to contribute my part to my community whatever it is in a good passion and part. And tourism and, and farming as a business is my passion. In fact, in a farming, you know, I see this, this place, Etihad Mass Agro Industry, our farm. Uh, it's a, I visited 10 years back, amazingly, and then that's a very beautiful place. And I say, I say to myself, you know, I want to be part of this program, like I want to have some share. But at that time, I was not able to own that farm or have the money or nothing, but only the vision and the interest. So by 2009, Ethiopian calendar, uh, when Ethiopian mass shareholders are decided to sell the farm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of my family member also does, he owns the share in that farm. So I was thinking, you know, I have to do this. So I, one of my friend and uh, also interested about that. So we buy the share of the company. So we own that farm. And then, you know, farming is a very important to Ethiopia in general. And then it's also very good uh, for every individual because we are farmers in nature. I'm also come up from Dillas, you know, so I'm, I like green, I like nature. You know, Gedeo zone is the most widely green area. So, you know, that's what I hide myself in Gulele Park. <laughs> Because like, that's, that's, that's my, that's from ah, that kind of environment I came. <laughs> so I started the, the farming by 2009, Ethiopian calendar. And now it's almost seven years, 60 years. We grow different kind of things, but I'm focusing in, in a fish. We have a lake in that place, so it's called Ellen Lake. Okay. In fact, several fish inside. When the Corona time came, uh, that was also the timing pushed me more to be a farm because, you know, I'm a restless guy. I couldn't see, sit in a town. So I go to my farm. I stay in my farm. Usually I plant banana. I plant mango in that farm and also fish. So fish is also for Ethiopia very important. Uh, I'm also the president of Ethiopian Aquaculture Association. We are promoting fish so much. We need people to know how to do by pond because Ethiopia is landlocked country. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't go to a big ocean to get fish. So we should have to learn how to have fish in our home because our diet is you know, affected. In, you know, in Ethiopia, one of the biggest issue is also uh, malnutrition issues for the children. So fish is have omega-3, you know, that will, yeah, that's why, why I'm, I'm doing that business. So now I can say, what challenges did you face when you <laughs> go to the farm? That's that's big challenge. You know, last year in our area, there was a lot of security measures happening, even if the farm is very near to Addis. Mm. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of security issues. Uh, we already lose our, our tractor. Now, recently, the past one month, relatively, it was good. So we start to do farm different product again. But the last year was not good generally because if there is no any peace, there is yeah. no anything in this country. <laughs> it goes back to yes. your number one. Yes, <laughs> issue. <laughs> so can you share a success story from your work with the Ethiopian Fish Producers Association? Yeah, uh, in fact, our association is uh, you know, very small members have, you know, we don't have any support, we don't have any finance. Individuals uh, like me and other who have interests and who have their own interests. And then we also, you know, put our own finance. About fish, I think as a country, we didn't give even attention. That's how I see. Mm -hmm. uh, the success story for me is uh, personally also I did this in my neighborhood. There is a lot of young people, so we give training uh, by ETU Admas. Uh, for 1,500 people to young guys to know about how to do pond fishing. 
Uh, and then also for uh, uh, this initiative is supported also by MasterCard Foundation recently, so that we, we already help around 25 young people to have their own pond, have fish production, selling fish to the market. Mm -hmm. Now in that village, people tell me it will be a zoo. My, my ponds are a zoo because a lot of people come and see. They didn't believe they're on ice because mm -hmm. most of them, they know only fishery are in a lake or river and across. Even they don't have the information. So people are visiting, interested. They call us, they say, please do in our, this project in our land. We have land, we have water, what else we need? Can you support us? What is it? So this is one of success story. It's in Kenteri, Warada. We have this young people who already start sailing fish uh, with this. You made a good point. So I think we can also actually tell the young generation now what they do need. If let's say somebody's looking at this and they're a bit like, oh my God, maybe I could do this. So if you could tell us what it takes or what it entails for us to actually have a fish pond. Say, I want ah. to do it in, in, in yeah, town, in the city. Yeah, you can do You can do in the city. Uh, the first thing is, uh, you know, these days technology is there. Mm -hmm. Young people can get this information very easily. There is different type of fishes, in fact, uh, but uh, the, uh, from five to five to 10 to 10 uh, uh, land, it means like five meter by five okay. meter <laughs> is the smallest pond. Okay. that you can do or more than that. Okay. I'm not a technical uh, a person or educated on this background, but since I learned myself, I educated myself through this, to do fish, fish pond is very easy. Um, not that much taking land um, because most people go to chicken industry, to mm -hmm. different industries. Fish industry is also very, very good. They can be profitable. In our country, there is doing that much fish. So easily, what's the first thing they have to do is look for space, any space, and then that space, check the soil, if the soil can hold the water. If the soil can hold the water, it's much easier. Or if cannot hold the water also, there was jaw membranes, plastics that they can use, they can or they can make concrete easily. Then they have to have an outlet, in and out outlet for the fish. On always on out outlet and in outlet, they need to have a net because the fish cannot go out with the water together. They have to change the water minimum a week. That will be also good for water to give him oxygen to the water when you change it. And then after that, we, we sell the, the, the fishes, my team, uh, so they can buy. It's just five birds for each fish. And to give them information more, one fish is about, can, can have a lot of eggs. Exactly. <laughs> so they can be reproduced in their uh, thing easily. They can get the training online and also physical training. There is uh, two institutions giving trainings uh, 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 recently in Debrezeit, also in Bishaftu. There is a Kalahiot uh, Muluwangel training center. Other locations also there will be in, in Zuai, in uh, Malki, in Sabeta also. One of uh, the fish, you know, there is a lot of Adisaba University is also working this with Sabeta. Uh, technical college. Do we have any in Addis? Do you have any in Addis, that actually does that in uh, Addis within the city? Within the city? Not really. Not really. But you know, the Brazil is very near. It's not no, no, I was just, I was Sabata just curious. is also very I was near, just curious. yes. So they can go to the fish business, they can go to YouTube, they can see a lot of things. Mm -hmm. There's a future business in Ethiopia. That's mm -hmm. very nice. I, ha I have a feeling it's a good business too. Yeah. It's a healthy business. It's a business. You know? Yeah. So how does Ethiopia Admas agro industry impact Ethiopia's agricultural sector? Any production will have impact in the economy, True. whatever amount you produce. When Ethiopia Admas have a thousand quintal of uh, barley or any amount of teff or any onion that to bring to the market or any fish we bring to the market, that's also contribution to the community. Absolutely. One. The second is we give three kinds of service to our community. To the farmers nearby, we give technological service, we give seedling to the community, we give advice, we advise the farmers in our community. Uh, sometimes we buy product from our farm community and we sell it back here with our product because we have also have market access. Creating market access is also one of the things we did for the farm. So, you know, we, we try to contribute our part. You know, what I see, I see myself as an, uh, you know, one person told me, you know, Haila, we always do this different, different things and every time. I told him there was a jungle that was burned and then all the lion, all the elephant come out and then overwhelmed on that thing. 
and they see one bird have a you know little water in her mouth and going to that to do it. So I believe everybody's personal contribution will change a little bit. So I'm focusing on my own personal contribution to my community, Beautiful. not complaining around. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's usually better that way. Yes. How do you balance your entrepreneurial ventures with your commitment to peace and cultural exchange? You know, my things are very specific. My Pogme is every year. That's very beautiful, as I know. I'm just now doing Pogme only in this month, promoting Pogme, bringing partners for Pogme, promoting it internationally, and so forth. Mm. As I told you, all my projects are meet sometimes together mm. in some way. So the peace journey, as I told you, is like a non-profit organization. Uh, so there's a lot of young people involved on that, and just to promote peace and pan-Africanism. So I give my time for that also because this is my initiative. The farm is well established. It's a shareholding company. I'm one of the shareholders. Me and my friend are major shareholders in the company. We buy the major share of the company. So we have all the structure layout there. The manager is there, farm manager is there, you know, uh, agronomist is there, and every professional do his own professional work. We are also a seat as a board and director of board. So we see, you know, the results and every time we try to have meeting and discuss about that. But the rest is uh, going on very well. I just trying to merge them together. So you balance them very yes, well. Yes, very well. <laughs> what you're very telling well. me. Yes, <laughs> yes. What role does community engagement play in your business initiatives? Mm, that's, that's a big role. Without community engagement, mm. you cannot have anything. In all of my businesses, the farm business like that, without the tourism is also without people, you cannot do nothing. So the community contributes a lot. I think I want to appreciate a lot of people. I cannot count their name. My team, especially doing this for a long time with me together. So there is a lot of people supporting, a lot of communities supporting our work. Beautiful. This is my last question. And it's a serious question mm -hmm. because as you know, the whole world needs peace right now. Mm -hmm. What future goals do you have for peace journey for development? This time, our country really suffered. Like we are suffering because of peace luck. I believe Ethiopia need more peace journey, more young people movement about peace, more thing to bring the people together to tell them their similarities. Mm -hmm. The problem in this country are people are focused on their differences, mm -hmm. no similarities. So peace journey goal is in the schools to build the young generations to create awareness. You know, before uh, 10 years, as I told you, we promote peace by different mechanism, by screening films, different kind of documentary films, because the young people need to be entertained in between when they want to listen something. So we've been showing Teza. If you see Teza film, Haile Garima film, we screen it in all universities. And I think at that time when we see that, we say that this thing should not have to be repeated. Sure. So, you know, we work with Professor Haile Garima very closely. Mm -hmm. uh, by 2010-9, they are also uh, giving us their film to be screened all over Ethiopia and Africa. So Teza is a very meaningful film for us because Ethiopia passed through Teza. That's an example of our past. If you don't see your past, you cannot correct your future. So basically, we are telling the story by different films for a young generation to understand how peace is the most important and give value of peace, mm. how to bring peace. So uh, for the next peace journey, plans are focused on the young generation again, in the universities focused. And also we want to also work as a trauma healing. They need a lot of support. Yeah. This is our target for the future. Beautiful. We've had great conversations about different subjects. Now, before we say our goodbyes, 
Agame is coming up. Agame is the last month before Ethiopian New Year. Yes. Our New Year is in September 11th. Mm -hmm. So from the 6th of September to the 10th of September, we will be in Agame Festival. Yes. So I think before we do the closing, we need to go through that one more time. The date, the place, and what to expect. Okay. I want to say like this. Certain number, you know, is not a lucky number in the West. I believe this certain number will be a lucky number in Africa to bring all Africans together. So one thing that I think we have to talk about is Ethiopia is known for 13 months of sunshine. Mm -hmm. You know, why did we even say 13 months is because of Pragami. Yes. Right? So yes. you come in beautifully in this. Uh, yes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so a, tell us about the Yes, Pragami. the 13 months. Pragami, the unique time for us to celebrate, to come together, to know one, one another culture, you know, to know about Pan-Africanism. So Pragami is an African golden month. And we invite everybody in Ntoto Park. We are trying to organize a free transport as much as Beautiful. we can. See, to that's the a good information. Uh, at the same time, we are planning also to don't have any entrance for Pagmi apart from the current everyday entrance fee in Toto is? Park, 200 bir. Okay. Only 200 bir will ask in Toto Park, so that would be also one of the entrance fee. But there is, please come, enjoy with us all the six days, come and trade. If you have any businesses, you can come and promote your business. You can sell your businesses. We have very fair price for you, for uh, vendors who want to sell anything. Come and compete the beauty contest. You are beautiful. Everybody is beautiful. You know, we say the shortest, the fattest, everybody is beautiful. Just come naturally, wash your face and come to compete with us. You like it and you can enjoy the camping with us. If you come in any dates, you're going to enjoy it. So don't miss it out. Come, enjoy Pagmi with that. Promote your culture. Know your country. Promote Pan-Africanism. Let's work together. Thank you, Kazi. Beautiful. Thank you very much for coming to our studio Thank you so and much. giving us this lovely conversation. Thank you again. This is your Pan-African show called Africa with your host, Kazala Seifu. Thank you.